So back to having more Ford Focus fun here. A couple months back I made a video about uh, the problems that I was having with the lower ball joints in the, the Focus. Um, here's the one I tore out. Now really other than the torn up rubber boot there's nothing wrong with this ball joint which I discovered. It's still tight. Like it takes a lot of pressure to move that thing. What the problem was I can't push it in by hand but it was loose in the housing even with the clamp bolt clamp bolt there tightened up it was loose so the ball joint was moving up and down in the housing and side to side a bit and uh, I interpreted that as a worn ball joint but obviously it wasn't which we discovered a week or so ago so it turns out that my steering knuckle housing here is slightly worn I personally never encountered this in all the years I've worked on a car but so it now has another steering knuckle on it but in the process of putting that all together I ran into problems with the clamp bolt now this clamp bolt is 11 millimeters here with the 10 millimeter thread on it and uh, I don't know which way it goes in I'll, I'll look that up later but either way um, the problem I had was uh, the Haynes manual says that you torque this to 66 foot-pounds and when I did that I tore the threads right out of the nut so uh, later in the video I'll show a torque chart and that but uh, that's the the problems I've been having with these uh, lower ball joints is that the, the housing wasn't gripping the wasn't gripping the shaft of the ball joint uh, I don't know why I don't know the history of this housing uh, it's got uh, mm, We'll say 180,000 miles on it. Um, like I say, I've never encountered a problem like this where this has been loose. Uh, only about, we'll say, 10 thou loose. I, I miked the replacement part and, uh, and that. But so anyway, uh, my camera cut out. This is a remake of the first part of the video, so it may not mesh uh, totally with the second part. But uh, anyway, that's what the, the issue I've been having is... Uh, uh, car wandering around the road because the lower ball joint wasn't tight in the housing so anyway we'll continue on with the the next part of the video I hope it uh, makes sense as I was saying I think this is the stupidest design for clamping in a strut that's possible it's like the camera cut out on me there I'll show you here's the strut simple enough it goes in it's got a little fin on it that your bolt goes through that's it nice and simple okay well the rest of the world goes this way Instead of having a big hole here and that, they have a fin with two cross bolts. And this is what the strut looks like. Strut's a little bit more complicated, okay, whatever. But guess what? If you break a bolt off, it's not the end of the world. You just put a new bolt in. Pound the bolt out, put a new bolt in. When you break a bolt off in this, yeah, it's kind of like the end of the world. I know, I've been there and done that. So, much prefer this design. Now, sometimes you run into weirdies like this one. This is off an old Honda. It's got an upper ball joint and lower ball joint. But generally speaking, most of them are built this way, thank goodness. So, it's, it's just a better system. And to take apart in the, in the uh, salt driving conditions that we live in here in, around Lake Ontario. This, on the other hand, is not a good idea. Now, here, on the clamping the lower ball joint in, uh, what seems to be the problem is this shoulder bolt. Now, the Haynes manual says to torque this bolt to 66 foot-pounds. I'm having a little bit of an issue with that. I don't know if you can read it there, but it's a grade 10.9. It says 10.9. Now, this isn't the original bolt, i got to admit. This is the original Ford bolt, which is like impossible to get out because it re uses an Allen uh, socket head and as you can see I had to weld a half inch nut to it and uh, it kind of got destroyed taking it out because it was seized in but I don't think you could torque that bolt to 66 foot pounds and I'll, I'll show you why because if you look here it's this line here it's an M10 thread comes over class 10.9 53 newton meters on dry threads that's 40 foot pounds of torque even if you go to a class 12.9, you only get to 62, and that's newton meters. So you multiply that by 0.74, this will be in the order of, we'll say, 50 foot-pounds, if that, maximum. And that's a class 12.9. We're back to here, so 40 foot-pounds max. 
on this size of bolt. Now the bolt is 11 millimeter, but the threads are 10 millimeter. So you have to go by what size the threads are. I know because here's a here's a nut on one of my new ball joints, very thin and it's nylon. There was no nylon insert in it, but when I tried tightening that to 63, I tore the threads right out of it. So that was no good. So I don't know which way it's supposed to be. If it's supposed to be torqued to 63, I don't see how the numbers work, but the only way I can think to do that is to go buy a grade 8. Now, I don't recommend anybody doing this, okay? I want to say that. You should use the bolt that it comes with, but you might want to consult a torque table because the, the, the ball joint came with no torque specs. So all I had to go by was the Haynes manual. But when you look at the torque spec chart, it's about 40 foot-pounds. Now, what I'm going to try to do is use a grade 8 7 16 bolt because it does fit the hole it might require a little bit of sanding I don't know you got to get a bolt with the right shank length though this one isn't right you put it beside that one well it might work because you don't want threads like I say I don't recommend anybody doing this but I'm just showing it uh, for the heck of it here because you got to have the shank solid because that's where it does the clamping in here Okay, then you got 7 16 threads to deal with. I might have to sand it down just a hair because it, or sand the, file the hole out. It doesn't quite fit. I'll have to test this first, but I'm just saying. Uh, grade 8, and then you could actually torque that to 50 foot pounds safely. But uh, I, I don't know what's going on with these clamp bolts here, but I'm having a problem uh, getting the bolts. They like say uh, stripping nuts out and different things. Um, and metric bolts aren't easy to find. So this is a special bolt because it's it's a shoulder bolt and then next the thread next down. So anyway, that's what my problem was. It wasn't faulty ball joints. It was, I don't know, faulty uh, clamp bolts or what have you, or the housing was worn. But anyway, the end result, the housing's worn. Now, one thing I did notice is that these ball joints, they're smaller at the top than they are at the bottom. They're they're not tapered, but they're just two different diameters. So it's not a simple thing to uh, to fix. But uh, anyway, just to let you know, that's the problems I've been having with my Ford Focus. Uh, it acted like uh, you know the, the steering just got loose, and it wasn't it wasn't ball joints. It was loose in the housing here. So. Maybe you'll encounter the same thing. Maybe I'm just being stupid and this I'm the only person that's ever had this problem. But uh, anyway, just wanted to uh, share that info with you there on uh, what I believe uh, is a faulty reading in the Haynes uh, book for uh, torque. Uh, to me, this bolt cannot be torqued to 66 foot-pounds. Uh, the maximum would be about 40. So if you're stripping bolts out, that's why. The bolt is not built for 66 foot-pounds. Anyway, oh, one other thing while I'm here. If you're putting uh, one of these back in, do yourself a real big favor and put anti seize on the axle splines. This is the one we had to machine the axle out of the uh, housing because it was permanently seized in there. So, anyway, sorry about bitching about it, but everybody have a good one.